Hey guys, welcome to Dread Vault again. This is Tolga Ser. Today we will check Neural Amp Modeler. I've been seeking for an opportunity to talk about all of those plugins, VSTs, digital stuff and processors and floorboards, you know, all of those stuff. And I think today is the best time to talk about it. But I know you came to the video for Neural Amp Modeler. Because of that, I'm gonna check the plugin first and then later we can talk about all of those stuff. But first, if you can subscribe to the channel and like the video, that would be amazing. Thanks for that. In this video, I'm gonna use my Jackson King V Pro Two-Faced. This guitar has a mahogany body with mahogany neck with ebony fretboard and Seymour Duncan SH6 distortions. And I'm gonna use the bridge pickup of it. So. We are seeing the plugin. You can find the plugin on the GitHub. It's your decision. I don't think it's really trustworthy compared to an official plugin. I'm not sure, but I'm not a computer guy, so I don't know the risks about it. I just I just installed it. So you are seeing the plugin. We have an EQ section, an output section. We have a gate and input level. You can find the models in GitHub as well. There are lots of different profiles that you can load. Also, we have an impulse response loader. For this, I pick some impulse response files of mine. Actually, those are not mine, just from my archive. We have an impulse response from Ola Englund from years ago. It says has a 2x12 cabinet. Also, we have an impulse response from SMG Studios. It's a V30, but I'm not sure about the model of the cabinet. Also, we have a simple Mesa oversized with V30s from Onhammer. Onhammer impulse responses, Onhammer Studios. I don't know the full name. So, I'm gonna start with Onhammer and then I will pick the 5150 block letter with a boost we don't know the boost and first i'm gonna close the eq because i just want to feel the raw copy raw profile and here we go Let's close the gate. It's not that noisy. And let's check the gate. Let's choke it up. A little more aggressive. We lost the gain. It's fine. Now let's check the EQ section. Let's see what's the response of those EQ knobs because most of the time you know when we profile an amplifier it it can be good it's mostly good but when we start to tweak in all of those knobs it starts to lose the feel it starts to lose the characteristics by the way I picked the 5150 because you know I'm a 5150 guy and I know the response of a 5150 a 6505 the new EVH 5150s the old PV 5150s and I think I can can decide the quality of this plugin by a 5150 profile but we will check the other amps later just a simple decision the treble knob is not working that good because if you will increase the level of the treble knob in a real 5150 it won't be that fizzy probably it will make an treble increase like a parametric EQ feels a little bit fizzy it feels a little bit it's wrong it's just wrong <laughs> And let's check the middle knob. As you 
can see, as you can hear, it's not sound like a real amplifier now. It's not right. But when we make the EQ section close, it's pleasant, it's quite nice. And let's check the bass knob. My first impression, it's actually really my first impression, by the way, I just installed the plugin and then I start to record. I think this plugin is quite satisfying if you want to use the EQ section, but I think it works like a camper, you know, in camper you should use the exact profiles if you will start to tweak the knobs about the EQ, it won't work like an amplifier knob because in the camper and I believe in the Neural Amp Modeler too, the preset, the model is a block with data and if you want to change the bass or middle or treble, you won't be able to tweak the tone like in an amplifier, in a real amplifier. Because of that, if the stock profile is okay for you, good for you, then you will be satisfied, I know that. And now let's check the different profiles. What we have in here, wow lots of details. Also, as you can see, we have the same profile with different EQ settings, you know, like presence 8, bass 6.5, mid 4.5. They also know you won't get the same effect by the knobs in the plugin. So they captured lots of different configuration of the same amplifier or preamp. I don't know, but I want to check something interesting for me. ENGL. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. It's not that far from the real thing. The ENGL Savage from the XFX2. It's nice. Let's see what we have in here. JCM 900. Let's find the high gain channel of it. By the way, I'm changing all of those parameters in the logic. So the edit of this video will be a pain in the ass. JCM 200 crunch. Let's check that. <laughs> JCM 200 I don't know 6505 plus we need the red channel without boost let's let's check that <laughs> Yes. I can hear the saturation in the palm mutes just like the real thing and it's it's really good for me I satisfied but as I mentioned before the EQ section isn't working at least isn't working as a amplifier B3 red let's check the triple X I'm not sure about that. And let's check the JVM Marshall with an overdrive or is it the high gain channel? <laughs> no. 
Now I want to demonstrate the effect of an impulse response on the characteristics of a preamp because we are making a decision about a product, about a plugin or about a pedal by the videos like this. And most of the time we are ignoring the fact that the cabinet and the microphone or the impulse response file has a huge impact on the tone. I just want to demonstrate the same preset by four different impulse responses. Some of you might like, some of you might hate but I want to demonstrate the diversity. So it's our first 5150. And let's close the EQ. By the way, I don't think there's a change. By the way, if you make the EQ section flat, you won't get an additional effect about the EQ. So it's either off or flat, it won't matter. So own hammer and the 5150 preset. <laughs> And let's check the SMG one. You know, it's a little bit fizzy, but it can be better in the mix. Another one from SMG as well. You know, it's much more boomy than the first one. And let's check the impulse response of Ola Englund. It's much more compressed with more saturation and the low end at the same time. So four different tones from the same preset with the four different impulse response. You either love them or hate them, but you can find the best for your taste. And my pick is the own hammer for this preset. <laughs> Let's talk about the digital stuff, about the processors, about the plugins. You know, since the 90s, trying to create real amp-like product, this was solid state amplifiers for a while. And then they start to manufacture pot bean or something like that. But today, when we investigate, when we check all of those gears, it's not that good. It can be good with impulse response. It can be good after some EQ touch, but it's not the real thing. However, I have faith about all of those neural stuff, about those AI stuff, about those creating a clone stuff, because we have to think about the needs as well. If you are just a dude who loves to play an old tube amplifier in front of him, and if that's what you want, you won't need a processor or a plugin or something like that but when it comes to the performance or recording or rehearsals we have lots of different needs in example if you are touring the weight of a cabinet and the amplifier and the delicacy of the tube can be an issue when it comes to the traveling place to place venue to venue and in these days a processor can be the best solution for you or when it comes to the rehearsals using the same presets from your ipad from the same plugins at home and at rehearsal at studio can be better than trying to tweak and finding the best from the studio's amplifier or you know about recording or about recording if you are working with a producer abroad or far away from you using the same plugins and trying to find in the sweet spot during the mixing session instead of sending the reamp stamps to him which is not that adjustable as a conclusion i believe being an open-minded person about all of those stuff instead of being a fanatic can be better for your own needs. Try different impulse responses, try different plugins, try the profiles of the artist that quite sounds like your taste because in every new day, the similarity is increasing. We start to capture every little difference in the response of a real amplifier. So this was Neuralamp Modeler and a little bit of my opinions. 
I hope you enjoyed the content. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, like the video, subscribe the channel. Till the next video, see ya.